Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You might have seen people pouring water into the radiator when the engine gets heated up. You know the reason behind that, right? Well, it's done to cool down the engine. But do you know how that happens? We'll discuss that in this video. This video is about the engine cooling system. Let's start with the basic question. Why do we need a cooling system? The combustion of fuel inside the engine creates an enormous amount of heat. This large amount of heat can potentially damage the engine parts and the cooling system prevents this by taking away the excess heat. On the other hand, if the engine is cooled too much, the thermal efficiency of the engine will decrease. Therefore, the function of the cooling system is to ensure that the engine is working under normal operating temperature. Engine cooling systems can be classified into two types. They are air-cooled and water-cooled systems. Let's start with the first one the air-cooled system. In this type, the cylinder walls and cylinder heads are provided with extended metal surfaces called fins. The heat produced inside the engine is transferred to the fins and the fins dissipate the heat into the atmosphere as air flows over it. Here, the rate of heat dissipation depends on the amount of airflow, area of fins and the type of fin material. Air-cooled systems are found in small-sized engines. This system is of less cost and there is no problem of leakages. But this system has less efficiency and hence most of the automobiles use water-cooled systems. In a water-cooled system, the cylinder walls, cylinder head and valve seats are provided with jackets through which the coolant water passes through. The coolant absorbs the heat and the heat is then transferred to the atmosphere by passing the hot coolant to a radiator. Water-cooled systems can be further divided into two types. They are thermosiphon circulation system and forced circulation system. We all know that the density of the hot liquid will be lesser than that of the cold liquid and so hot fluid moves up whereas the cold fluid moves down. If this density difference due to different temperatures is used to circulate the coolant, then the system is said to be a thermosiphon system. If a pump is used to circulate the coolant, then the system is said to be a forced circulation system. Let's move on to discuss the parts of the water-cooled system. It consists of a pump, coolant passages, thermostat, radiator, and a fan. A centrifugal pump is used for supplying the coolant. It is driven by the belt from the engine. Then we have a radiator. A heat exchanger which receives the hot coolant from the engine, cools it down and sends it to the pump for recirculation. A radiator consists of a number of tubes that are placed inside a stack of metal fins. These tubes have tanks on either side. Most vehicles use a vertical radiator where the coolant flows from top to bottom. But a few modern vehicles use horizontal radiators. The radiator is provided with a radiator cap which releases the excess pressure developed due to the increase in temperature of the coolant. There is also a reserve tank that collects the coolant that gets released when the radiator cap opens and returns it to the system after the temperature is reduced. Then there's a thermostat valve which regulates the coolant flow between the radiator and the engine. The thermostat is a copper cup that contains wax and pellets. When the coolant is hot enough, the wax expands, which in turn pushes the piston for opening the valve. Thus, the hot coolant goes to the radiator. But if the temperature of the coolant is not hot enough, the valve remains closed, which lets the coolant recirculate again until it attains sufficient temperature. Then, there's a fan driven by the engine, which blows against the radiator. The function of the fan is to aid the cooling of the coolant, especially when the vehicle is stopped or at low speeds. Fans in older vehicles are driven by the engine, which rotates until the engine stops. In order to utilize the unwanted power loss, modern vehicles use electric fans that are equipped with temperature sensors and run only if the preset temperature is reached. Finally, we have the coolant. The most commonly used coolant is a mixture of water and ethylene glycol. Ethylene glycol is usually added to prevent the freezing of water at low temperatures. Now, let's put all these together. The coolant from the pump enters the coolant passage and it takes away the heat from the engine. Coolant reaches the thermostat and it is recirculated to the engine until it reaches the temperature to open the valve. Once the coolant reaches the preset temperature, the thermostat valve opens and directs the coolant to the radiator. The coolant moves from the top tank to the bottom tank through the tubes where it loses its heat as air stream passes over the tubes when the engine travels. The fan aids the cooling process. If the pressure inside the radiator increases, the radiator cap releases the excess pressure. The coolant that bled off is stored in a tank and returns after the coolant is cooled down. This coolant is then recirculated again to continue the process. 
So this is how a water-cooled system works. This system ensures uniform cooling of the engine parts and it is more efficient than air-cooled types. But as the number of components is high, cost increases and this system requires more maintenance. So that's it for this video guys. We'll meet up again in the next one. Until then, bye.